Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, even though everybody believes I am a Muslim pretending to be a Christian, today we're going to react to what happens to good non-Muslims on Judgment Day by One Islam Productions. So despite people believing that I am already a Muslim, this video is of course of utmost interest to me. What happens to good non-Muslims on Judgment Day? From a Christian perspective, we say nobody is good but God. But I don't want to play semantics here. Of course, I understand what is meant by good non-Muslims. We are talking about believers from other faiths. So what would happen if I do not convert to Islam? What happens if I stay faithful? but I stay within my own faith. Let's have a look. Allah will do this to good non-Muslims on Judgment Day. So this is a question that is always asked about, well, I have good friends, I have good neighbors, I have relatives, I have uh, people in my workplace, they are good people. Or maybe I don't know them, but there are a lot of good people in this world. What will happen to them in the Akhirah? So no one can ask Allah and challenge Allah in what Allah does. لا يسألوا عما يفعل وهم يسألون. No one. لا يسألوا عما. Whatever Allah does, nobody can ask Him. He is not asked about what He does. This is what the Quran says. Absolutely correct. He is not accountable to anybody. He is the only one. Why would He account to you? لا يسألوا عما يفعل وهم يسألون. They will be asked about what they do. Exactly. So that is the yeah. first. Point to answer this question, and that is, we are not in a position to challenge Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Allah not. follows His own laws, and He has legislated those laws. The second point: He is the Creator of all laws. Why would He listen to your man-made laws? When it comes to assigning mercy, assigning adab, assigning heaven and hell, we have a very, very clear rule. We do not assign individuals to heaven and hell. We do not assign personalities to Jannah and Nar, to Rahma and Adab, we talk about generalities, not specifics. What do you okay? mean? Your friend Michael dies. No one has the right to say if Michael died as a Muslim or non-Muslim, he's going to go to heaven, he's going to go to hell. Uh -huh. No one. Your friend Mustafa. This is absolutely beautiful to me and I fully agree with this. Please let me know in the comment section if this is correct, what the speaker here says, but this is exactly how I view the world. Nobody can decide if you go to heaven or hell but God. No scholar, no imam, no priest, nobody on the internet, no matter what they've read, nobody knows but God. But dies. No one can say Mustafa was a pious man, he's going to go to Jannah. Doesn't matter. We are quiet about individuals except if Allah has said, Tabbat yada abi lahabin wa tab ma aghna anhum alu ma kasab, sayasla what? Naran. We can say Abu Lahab is in Nar because Allah says so. Otherwise, we are quiet about individuals. We never assign any individual to any specific fate, but we right. speak in generalities. We speak with conditions. Those who believe and do righteous deeds will go to Jannah. This is generalities. Sure. Those who reject Allah will go to Jahannam. This is generalities. Yes. Mustafa, sense. Michael, who might have done this and that, we are quiet because we do not know what is inside of them. Okay? The exactly. third point. You do not know their heart, only God knows their heart, and ultimately only God can decide, as we said already, if they go to heaven or hell, what they deserve. It's not for us to it say. It is very, very clear in the Quran and Sunnah that there is one path that leads to Jannah. Sure. In the Dina in the Lahil Islam. The religion that is acceptable to Allah is Al Islam. 
Here I have a question for you guys. Please let me know. The speaker says Al Islam, but in the Quran I didn't read this. I read Islam. So Islam as the submission to God. Are we speaking about religion or are we speaking about submitting to God? If we were to submit to God, if we were a believer despite the religion, we're not attributing anything to Allah. We're not connecting partners to Allah. We simply believe in one God despite the religion are we going to heaven or hell is this what is meant by it because i couldn't find al-islam in the quran but yet again i stand corrected i have read only a translation i haven't read it in arabic so please guys let me know in the comment section what you think allah says in the quran they said not Allah. They said, be Yahudi, be Nasrani, you shall be guided. Bal, no. Bal here is harfu idrab, you negate what preceded it. No. I will follow the Milla of Ibrahim who worshipped Allah alone. Yes. Sure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَن يَبْتَغِ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقُبَلَ مِنْهُ وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ This is the most explicit verse in the Quran that is imaginable. You cannot even word a verse that is more explicit. It's not even possible in the Arabic language. Whoever chooses any other way of life yes. other than Islam, it shall not be accepted of him. And exactly he shall be right. Any other way except Islam, but not Al-Islam. I'm not playing semantics here, guys. I'm really genuinely interested. I want to understand if the verse is talking about the religion of Islam. And then, of course, we could go further and talk about Shia Islam or Sunni Islam. I know this is a very heated subject. Or are we speaking about Islam, the submission to God, which then would mean, of course, that God wouldn't accept anything but full submission to him. And that's that. The hereafter, Let me know in amongst the, the losers. You cannot get more explicit than this. Yes. Now, having said this, I then went on and I said, all of this, we are talking about the paths that lead to Allah. And we say there is one path that leads to Allah. Only one path. And... This does not mean that if somebody says he's on the path, that he is actually on it. I.e., exactly right. somebody says he's a Muslim, doesn't mean he's going to go to Jannah. Doesn't mean it automatically. Nor does it mean that if somebody is not on the path, that they might not be forgiven as an exceptional scenario. And because... Makes absolute sense to me. I would go so far and make the bold claim to say that 99% of people, no matter what the religion, don't have a free ticket to heaven. No matter what the religion is. If you're born a Muslim and you don't have an idea about your religion and you're not following your religion and you're sinning on a daily basis, how would you go to Jannah? To enter Jannah. The sense. path does not lead to Jannah if it's not Islam. But it is possible that somebody on another path might be forgiven by Allah due to specific circumstances. And we all know exceptions are not made the rule. The rule is very clear. What is the rule? Whoever searches for a religion other than Islam, whoever chooses a religion other than Islam, it shall not be accepted of him and he shall be from the losers in the hereafter, from the khasid in the hereafter. So it is possible that a person is not a Muslim and ends up in Jannah. That is an exception. We never make it the rule. We never say, oh yes, non-Muslims are entering heaven. No, or else you say something like this, the purpose of Islam becomes meaningless. Yeah, absolutely. We said there are exceptions. If we're talking about organ religion now you cannot make such statements because that would defeat the purpose and that would crumble the faith as a firm believer you of course have to be of the utmost conviction that your religion brings you to heaven how do we know there are exceptions firstly Allah says in the Quran La nafsan illa wus'aha. and Allah says in the Quran Wa ma kunna hatta we will not punish anyone until the Prophet has been sent and that's why our Prophet said that whoever hears about me and then rejects me aha so the one who doesn't hear about our Prophet or our scholars add to this the one who doesn't hear correctly i.e. he had a very negative image of Islam yeah, and man. he didn't know what Islam was he never read the books of Islam he never met a Muslim so sure. this person what is his fate do we automatically say they're gonna go to Jannah which is what some of our previous scholars said that is also not very 
logical because if the one who doesn't know Islam automatically enters Jannah and you are a Muslim and you meet this person why should you give him da'wah when automatically he's entering Jannah exactly. think about it like that this also doesn't make any sense some yeah. of our scholars said this but it makes no sense you could leave him in blissful ignorance and he would go straight to heaven the correct Win. position is mentioned in the hadith in Muslim Imam Ahmed that our Prophet said there will be four people on the day of judgment and he mentioned them the old man who couldn't think straight when Islam came to him the, the, the decrepit old man number one number two the deaf person remember before there was sign language a person born deaf meant he is not communicating nobody can talk to him doesn't understand anything the you know Helen Keller inventing sign language changed the whole world for that group of people and allowed them to communicate otherwise for centuries and centuries a person born deaf could not communicate with anything and so there yeah. was as if they were living in a different dimension so uh, are, the one born sense. deaf and the one born between two prophets Ahl al fatra right and the one up to, uh, the no prophet was sent to so the process mentioned categories they will say to Allah on judgment day oh Allah it's not our fault and each one will give an excuse so Allah will say what if I had sent you a prophet and you saw the prophet? Would you have believed in him? Of course, on judgment day, what will they say? Yes, of course. So Allah will say, I will test you. Then Allah will send an angel and the angel will have something that looks like fire and they will recognize him to be from Allah as an angel. And the angel will say, if you truly believe in Allah, jump into this. And so those who trust Allah and jump in will be saved by Allah and enter Jannah and those who don't will have rejected scary, the point yeah, is there will the be a test on judgment day for those people we can make qiyas upon this and say anyone who did not hear of Islam and lived in times and places where there was no access to Islam that person will be tested on judgment day no problem okay bottom line that this question we understand why it's so relevant, people want to ask it, we understand why people get emotional, but at the same time, from a textual and logical and rational perspective, from unanimous perspective... Yeah, please don't get emotional, stay factual. Every single evidence of the Sharia and our common sense tells you, religions are either right or wrong, there's no middle path. No. Yes, we live in this world in peace and harmony, no question about it. Yes, we have good adab, no question about it. Yes, we are kind and merciful, no question about it. But on judgment day, there is one religion that will be rewarded and there is one religion that is correct. That You cannot both simultaneously be correct. Either it is okay to worship an idol or it is not okay. Sure, I but yet again, I have to say, for me personally, I'm not a scholar. I was just reading the Quran by myself or the translation of it. And for me, the takeaway point was you have to submit yourself to God. And this is why I have to say, simply by belonging to the religion of Islam, I don't see people going to heaven. I don't think that you just enter heaven because you became a Muslim. You have to do the work. You have to submit your will to God. And only like that, by submitting your will and letting go of your ego, letting the will of God manifest on earth through you, only like that you can enter heaven. This is how I see. Do you bow down in front of Jesus Christ or you don't either you worship Allah or you don't there is no middle ground sure. so we say in the deen in the Allah Islam and this is what we preach to the people but we also realize there will be exceptions there might be many exceptions but we never make the exceptions into a into a what into a rule we never preach the exceptions because no. when you preach the sense, exception, you're negating the rule. Yeah, you don't go and that. tell people, oh guys, don't worry. Many people will be forgiven on judgment. They go ahead and commit sins. No, you don't do that, do you? You nope. say the general rule, the sinner is going to be punished. That's what we preach, right? Simple. That's the whole purpose. Similar thing goes over here. Especially if you look at Islam as a social construct, not only as a spiritual faith, but as a political system, as a social construct, as I said, then especially you have to have those firm rules for your society. Society. If you want to have an Islamic society, you cannot say, oh, well, guys, actually, it doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want and you're still going to go to heaven. Preach. There is one way. You need and firm on rules. the day of judgment, there will be exceptions. Now, one final point. Again, I went into a lot of detail, but this is very, uh, this is very sensitive issues and people get very emotional. Understandably, understandably. The real, one of the real 
as problematic well issues in our time. So we talked about the one who has never heard of Islam, sure. but was overall religious. We hope good for that person. We hope good for that person on Judgment Day. We don't pronounce any judgment. That that person never heard of Islam. Talk about the tribes of Brazil. Some you know, or, or go back 500 years, the people living in this land, the native Indians. They would never have heard of Islam. We hope good for them, that if they were faithful to their morality, and they try to live good lives and inside everybody knows what is a good life. We are hopeful, but we don't pronounce a judgment. We right. talked about those who have the potential to hear Islam, but they don't do so. And we say that's not good news. We're, that's not that optimistic. If they just lock themselves shut in their houses, if they just want to live their lives like animals and don't think about <laughs> higher <animals>. cause, <laughs> they are falling short. So that's a problem on them. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. Very, very interesting stuff. Pretty much everything I wanted to say, I already said. Let me know in the comment section yet again what you think about my theory, if you will, the submission of God Islam in comparison to the religion Al Islam. I'm very keen to hear from you guys. All right, but this is it for today. The video is long enough as it is. Leave it a thumbs up if you liked it. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel via Patreon, Patreon. All the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.